Absolute psychopathic shit. I mean, just like 50 human beings. Remember, these are 50 human beings. And you're functionally like kidnapping them and then trafficking them across state boundaries. I want to start off with the migrant thing. Uh, let's see if the Thamesius playlist has the uh, the migrant thing. We're going to talk about the Patagonia founder. Oh, 50 migrants located, relocated to Martha's Vineyard. There is, I, I mean, I'm sorry. This is like a weird thing that is like weirdly not that bad. It's actually kind of good that they're doing this in a weird way because I do feel like uh, these migrants would be better taken care of in blue cities regardless. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's gonna, un I, I personally think it, it might backfire on them. I, I'm not even kidding. Like I literally, the people, like Martha's Vineyard is a terrible place to send them. And that's like specifically because they want to like, they want to be pieces of shit, right? But if you're sending them to DC or if you're sending them to like a big enough city, yeah, I think you can absolutely do that. Like you, you can, you absolutely can. And in a weird way, I do think that that is, um, in a weird way, I do think that that's like a, a, a counterproductive for them, but it's actually overall good, kind of. Like, I haven't really been able to, I haven't really been able to make my mind up on this. It's still dehumanizing because it's like, they should be able to, you know, go through, um, they should be able to basically go through the proper protocol wherever they are, right? Like, it's kind of silly. A lot of these migrants that go to Texas, like they have immediate family in Texas. You know what I mean? But as migrants arrive, Martha's Vineyard residents and businesses lined up to help. Food, coffee, bedding, and warm clothes have been arriving at the island. Dude, it's backfiring. I'm telling you. They just literally thought like everyone's going to be just as racist as we are. You know what I mean? It's like, why the fuck would they? Uh, why, why would... The cruelty really is the point, brother. Yeah, I mean, they're just doing it because, like, I think this is a really silly stunt. They're using tax dollars on this, okay? Uh, there are negative consequences of this. Like, first and foremost, like, you're kind of, um, you're, ta you're taking away the autonomy of these people and you're tr mistreating them like they're not human beings or whatever, uh, which is really fucked up, obviously. However, I do think that it, this is kind of uh, backfiring on them because you sent them to blue cities and those motherfuckers are going to take care of these people. You know what I mean? They're, they're going to they're gonna help out. DeSantis the sent them with a paper on where to go get a job, housing, etc. and gave them an address to a vacant lot, literally evil. Back in this country, we want to tell you about an escalation in the political fight over immigration. Dozens of apparent migrants landed by charter flight uh, on a rocky island in the Atlantic, Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts. This was yesterday afternoon. They arrived as part of what Governor Ron DeSantis calls a relocation program. Many did not know where they were going, and local officials on the island were not given any advance notice of the flight's arrival. Nick Giovanni of our Boston station WBZ is in Woods Hole. That's just across the water from Martha's Vineyard uh, in Massachusetts. Uh, Nick, good morning. Absolute psychopathic shit. I mean, just like just 50 human beings. Remember, these are 50 human fucking beings. And you're functionally like kidnapping them and then trafficking them across state boundaries. And the only reason why you're allowed to do this is because no one sees migrants as human beings. Like they just see them as like completely devoid of any sort of rights whatsoever. This kind of thing would never happen. You can't do this to anyone. Can you imagine someone's like, hey, uh, actually, you know, I saw that you shoplifted, right? A, a, a fucking sandwich. So now I'm going to put you on a plane to a different state. You can't do that. You can only do this to like, uh, you can only do this to, to felons. You can only do this to homeless people and you can only do this to migrants. Most of them black or brown, by the way, predominantly black or brown. And that is exactly what's happening here. Okay. You're, you're trafficking children, which is also ironic from the QAnon party, right? They're literally trafficking children over state lines. But again, they don't have any fucking rights. So go off, I guess. However, this can have a positive, like I said, uh, this can have a positive impact because the underlying assumption is that these places are not going to want to take care of these people.
and that the, the voters themselves are going to be reactionary just like they are. But it turns out it's kind of uh, backfiring a little bit. Tony, good morning to you. This is one of the ferry terminals here on Cape Cod that takes passengers to Martha's Vineyard. And it is there this morning where those migrants are waking up in at least two shelters that we know of following an island-wide response to their arrival. Volunteers on Martha's Vineyard found themselves scrambling to find shelter, food, water, and other services to accommodate the unforeseen arrival of 50 migrants, including the elderly and children, flown there as part of a relocation plan originated by Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Martha's Vineyard Community Services had um, 50 uh, people sort of literally walk up to their front door. Witnesses say the group wandered some three miles from the airport into Edgartown. Once in town, the migrants were met by volunteers who brought them to a high school where they were fed and later transported by school bus to a church to stay for the night. Authorities sent out urgent pleas on social media asking for volunteers to help with an urgent humanitarian situation. Barbara Rush worked into the night helping the families at St. Andrew's Episcopal Church. From what we found out by talking to the people there, um, originally from Venezuela, they were flown here. Um, we're not sure um, what, uh, what plane brought them here or how they got on a plane to here. Volunteers said they were told by some of the migrants they did not know where they were, but were told they would be given housing and jobs. A statement from a DeSantis spokesperson read in part, Massachusetts, New York, and California will better facilitate the care of these individuals who they have invited into our country by incentivizing illegal immigration through their designation as sanctuary states. Like low key, he's not wrong though. Uh, in a weird way, what the fuck is this? Your Steam Deck is ready, but held only two days? Oh my god, I just got my fucking Steam Deck. Let's go. That was crazy. That's a crazy thing to fucking... Oh my god. I've been waiting for this moment for a very long time, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on one second. Hold on. Sorry. That was crazy. That's a crazy notification to just get. Since the spring, Republican governors in Texas and Arizona have transported several thousand migrants and asylum seekers to New York, Chicago, and Washington, D.C., all cities with Democratic mayors. Yet, unlike those major cities, these arrivals aren't met with migrant resources and services like immigration courts, where their asylum cases can be heard. Immigrants um, who were told that they would be greeted here um, with a place to stay and with jobs. Massachusetts State Representative Dylan Fernandez arrived on the island Wednesday and called the move by the DeSantis government to transport migrants there with seemingly no coordination, quote, evil. They're using children. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're using them as, as political pawns, right? Which is insane. Like, uh, they're using literal children. They are trafficking literal children to do like a, to do a, a gotcha. Like a political gotcha. And Fox News was, of course, on site when they got off the bus uh, because this was the entire point. Wait, what the fuck? I need to install something? I just got a Steam Deck. What the fuck would I have to install for the Steam Deck? Steam always assumes you're buying a game to download. You were saying something about DeSantis being right. Are migrants being baited for the promise of sanctuary states? No. No. DeSantis, the only part of what DeSantis is right about is that, yes, these undocumented immigrants that are seeking asylum, okay, will probably be better treated in blue states, in sanctuary states. That's true. Sanctuary cities are better for migrants. It is just the fucking truth. So, yes. And you see it. You see it, motherfucker. Immediately, these guys came in, and the first thing that they were met with is like a sea of support. You know what I mean? Like, their execution is disgusting. Their execution is absolutely disgusting, okay? Just like when I execute the top of the hour ad break 20 minutes into the hour. Here's the one minute ad break now, okay? Um, but yeah, here, let's keep going. That's political pawns. Um, but the island community has really rallied together. So yeah, and ultimately, they did something really fucked up. And they treated these people as though they are not human. They took away their autonomy. They, they lied about the, the prospect of like a better future. Like there's no immediate jobs available because there was no coordination with the other states. 
Like if this was a normal fucking country, okay? If the United States was a normal country and not just like, uh, you know, white supremacists and light white supremacists fucking constantly duking it out in this never ending political theater as they like try to figure out better ways of fucking over the poor, you would have collaboration. You'd be like, all right, there is like, you know, 10,000 migrants that we have here and there are areas of need. We should be able to better serve these migrants. Uh, these migrants would uh, be better protected and better served in areas of need like Oklahoma, where there is like a labor shortage or something like that, which is still a little bit de uh, dehumanizing for sure. But you would offer them the opportunity. You'd say, hey, look, this is a place where there is actual ho housing. There is actual, uh, you know, relocation programs. There are actual training programs. There are actually adequate translators. Um, and that would be, uh, you know, uh, opening up more additional jobs in places like that, right? And then you would say, hey, would you like to go here? Okay? That's how you would do this. And then there would be an actual fucking asylum process uh, where the states are collaborating with one another and actually creating housing opportunities for the people that are coming. They just fucking kidnapped them and sent them over and said, hey, here, here's an empty lot where there's a building where you can live in or some shit. Okay? Which is really fucked up. One of the migrants we spoke to last night said he spent 12 days waiting to cross the border. Then he spent three weeks being processed before they dropped him off at the airport. He said that he was only processed so fast because he was from Venezuela. There are thousands of people from Mexico who have been in the processing facility for months just because they're from Mexico. Yeah. Do you think there's any stock in their excuse about border towns not having resources to handle these people? What? No, dude. They're already spending a, a fuckload of money just like shipping them uh, over to uh, Martha's Vineyard and shit. What do you mean? No, that's guys we're talking about states okay especially states like texas and shit they literally have enough power the they command the power of entire states okay they have resources brother they literally have resources especially because migrants mean new jobs both new jobs for the migrants to take on but also new jobs that that did not exist prior in both relocation Asylum seeking, uh, you know, legal paperwork and also uh, education programs like there are so many jobs you need to build more housing. We're not talking about fucking we're not talking about like Alabama. We're talking about Texas, more tax revenue, more jobs for, uh, you know, Americans that currently don't have jobs like there's so much. There is so much going on. Sending them to a place like D.C. is worse because D.C. is technically... D.C. doesn't have the, the same pool of funds and resources that states can tap into. That's one of the, that's one of the areas that's, like, fucked up. Anyway. addition to food and shelter, my... Texas is scared of becoming California. Dude, that's so funny that you say that, especially because, like, Texas is an incredibly diverse state. Like, people always think Texas is yee-yee, but Texas has a long fucking history of, like, like, Texas was Mexico, man, just like California. What the fuck are you talking about? You know how many Mexican uh, Texans, like Tex-Mex, you know how many fucking, uh, uh, like, you know, uh, the Mexicans already live in Texas? Texas has always been a state that's, like, hella Hispanic. The fuck? North Mexico to begin with. A lot of people forget that reality that, like, most of these southern states are, that's why I always make that joke, like, there's only two ethnicities in America. You're either Italian if you're in the Northwest, I mean, if you're in the Northeast, like close to fucking New York, the closer you are to New York, the more Italian you are, or you're Mexican, uh, the closer you are to the Southwest or so the South in general. Same people also forget some of the most insane American neo-Nazis are in SoCal. Yeah. Yeah. Wh where do you think the, the names come from? Like San Antonio, El Paso. Wh what is that? Is that you think that's uh, American? I mean, this is literally an Anchorman reference at this point. You know what I mean? Like uh, uh, San Diego. What was it? A whale's pussy? Is that what, he, what was the joke? A whale's vagina. Anyway. Yeah, Los Angeles. Anyway, so um, the strategy of busing undesirables north is not a new one. To embarrass northern liberals and humiliate black people, southern white citizens council started their so-called reverse freedom rides, giving black people one-way tickets to northern cities with false promises, jobs, housing, and better lives. Yeah, this was a this was a, a, a clan tactic. By the way, the Kennedy White House received mail from the leaders in a targeted uh, leaders in the targeted states asking the federal government to intervene in the cruel, merciless hoax and their traffic in human lives and misery. DeSantis' move may backfire among his own anti-communist voter base. 
Yeah, there's also this other stunt that is probably pissing off the Cubans and Venezuelans that already live in Miami-Dade County. Ron DeSantis' stunt of flying 50 undocumented migrants to Martha's Vineyard may play well on Fox News, but the fact that it was 50 undocumented Venezuelans who would escape the Maduro regime may not play as well in Miami-Dade County. Yeah. That's the other part of it. These are fucking, these are the good ones. You know what I mean? I thought these were the good ones, man. These were the ones who were running from communism. That's how you're going to treat, uh, that's how you're going to treat your voter base, Ron? I guess Cubans don't really give a fuck, but there are plenty of Venezuelans who also have escaped communism living in fucking Florida. So there is that as well. I am here on the ground. They actually don't care. Most importantly, though, yeah, Cubans don't give a shit, <laughs> most likely. But most importantly, though, like I said, time and time again, this, is, this probably will backfire because, I mean, these guys will most likely, you can, you can literally, you, can, you are handing a gigantic dub to blue states to be like, yeah, we took the fucking migrants that you didn't, that you, you know, shame, uh, shamelessly sent over like you're a part of the fucking clan, okay? And now they have incredible lives here, you fucking piece of shit. You did human trafficking. Migrants were also tested for COVID and were all negative, we're told. Now, as for Massachusetts Governor Charlie Baker, who's also a Republican, his office told us the state will continue to support the short-term sheltering services provided to those migrants. Uh, reporting from Woods Hole, Cape Cod, Massachusetts, Nick Giovanni, Tony, back to you in New York. Uh, Nick Giovanni for us uh, from WBZ there, our partners in Massachusetts, a story unlike any. By the way, this is human trafficking and there is legal precedent for, for uh, you know, prosecuting this, I think. Governor Newsom has called on the Justice Department to investigate the interstate transportation of migrants. Um, like millions of Americans, I've been horrified at the images of migrants being shipped on buses and planes across the country to be used as political props. Clearly, transporting families, including citizens across state lines under false pretenses is morally reprehensible, but it may also be illegal because I think it is. You can't just like fucking ship a bunch of humans, dude. You can't do that. Um, I, I mean, this is like this is like that platoon moment, a movie that I just watched on a plane uh, flying into Los Angeles, California uh, yesterday. But it's like that moment in Platoon when they actually enter the fucking uh, Vietnamese village. And, and Charlie Sheen has this like come to God moment where he recognizes the humanity of the fucking Vietnamese that they are bullying and brutalizing and raping and murdering unjustifiably. Which is a great movie, by the way. High key recommended. Platoon, spoiler, suck my dick, dude. It's literally a 70 year old movie. You fucking idiots. Every si there, half the cast is like dead now, okay? Incredible cast, incredible movie, love that. Um, it was so good. I highly, highly recommend it. Also, it's about like legitimate history. So, um, as I was saying though, it, it is like, uh, I mean, it's, it's just boils it and recommends it. What the fuck are you talking about? Of course, I've seen Full Metal Jacket. I saw Full Metal Jacket way too early in my life though. I think it like fucked me up a little bit. Yeah, spoiler alert, Vietnam whooped the American asses. Um, so, you will definitely see that in that movie. Um, I watched Full Metal Jacket by myself when I was like 12, and that was definitely too early. Full Metal Jacket, Private Pile or whatever, Gomer, was it Gomer? Whatever, the, that moment, seeing that when I was like 12 or 13, or however old I was, that was the first time I went... Oh my God, I don't think I should have seen this by myself. Like that moment is when I realized like, oh shit, this is why they have like restricted, you know, 17 plus uh, maturity ratings on movies. I was like, like even in my little ass child ass brain, I was like, what the fuck? I think I just, I think this just unlocked something in my brain. I literally thought with my little ass kid brain, I was like, I probably should not have seen this. I was like this. I got so fucked up by Full Metal Jacket at a young age that I joined the army. Ha ha. Wait till you're older kids before watching that movie. Wait, what? You watched an incredibly anti-war movie and you joined the army? You got the wrong message, man. <laughs> what the fuck? It's like, it's the same as Platoon. It's like inherently anti-imperialist works right there. <laughs> Damn, this guy where he kills himself after being, like, brain broken by the American military? It's pretty sick.
It's like watching Starship Troopers and thinking fascism is tight, actually. Yeah, don't watch Stanley Kubrick movies until you're like at least 14, 15. You know, that's all I'm going to say. Or even Platoon. I have a Marine buddy whose favorite movies are uh, Full Metal Jacket and Jarhead. Yeah, of course, dude. Because he's too stupid to understand. That's why he's a Marine. What do you mean? Like, yeah, that makes the most sense. Being a Marine and, think, and saying like Jarhead is my favorite movie is so funny because Jarhead directly shits on you. The entire movie is about shitting on you being too stupid. What the fuck? My brother was a huge f film bro. Made me watch movies with him when I was like 10. That wasn't even the worst part. I found the part where they had a dead Viet Cong just hanging on. Put them on camp was more traumatizing. The Marines get off on self-deprecation. I mean, that does make sense. Um, anyway. Some dudes from my high school saw Jarhead and got more hyped to enlist. That makes no sense. What the fuck? I literally do not understand. I, I, I unironically don't understand how you can watch like a movie that literally says, look at how fucking dumb these guys are and look at how much they got fucked over by a government that like literally abused them for how dumb they are. Like, what do you think Jody is about? Like, what do you think when, when, uh, the, the fucking, uh, when they pop in the VHS, okay, the cassette and his girlfriend is getting fucked by the neighbor. Okay. What do you think that moment was about? What, what do you, you were like, oh, that's pretty sick. Like, I do want to go overseas and, uh, and, and fight in a war that is like completely unnecessary. That it's not even a fucking real war to begin with and have my wife get fucked. Uh, and then have everybody else in the, have everybody else in my platoon fucking fight for the tape so they can jerk off to it because they haven't seen pussy in like months. Jarhead was a great uh, movie though. It was great. Dudes jerk off Tyler Durden and Patrick Bateman for decades. How are you just realizing NA young minds are broke? Yeah. I did love, I mean, dude, a, a lot of my, I guess, anti-imperialist takes uh, unironically come from watching uh, at an early age, like watching Black Hawk Down and all these other fucking movies like i mean i also thought the military looked very cool in those movies but i also realized like yeah these guys are not having a good time we confirmed 50 migrants were flown to martha's vineyard and are being helped at a church the men women and kids said they didn't know where they were and florida governor Ron DeSantis told fox he sent them as part of his relocation program for illegal immigrants where they landed they just started walking until they found town offices governor DeSantis has promised to send migrants to progressive states he told Fox News, states like Massachusetts, New York, and California will better facilitate the care of these individuals, which he's not wrong about. Like, that part is actually, unironically, not wrong. I do think that these states will most likely facilitate better care for these people. But the way that he's doing this, this, uh, this relocation is literally fucking unjustifiable, cruel, inhumane, treating them not, they're not like they're human beings, but instead fucking, you know, baggage. There's, uh, there's some conflicting information. We're told the migrants are telling translators on the vineyard they are from Venezuela and flew in from Texas, but DeSantis claimed to Fox News that this was his program. Uh, got a statement for Governor Baker's office. The baker Polito administration is in touch with local officials regarding the arrival of migrants of Martha's Vineyard. Short-term shelter services are being provided by local officials. It also says it will support the effort. Emergency officials on Martha's Vineyard are now asking for, for, for volunteers to help with the unexpected urgent humanitarian situation. And guess what? They are doing that already. So get fucked, you fucking animals. You absolute pieces of shit. Absolute dog shit, psychopathic, moronic baboons, dude. I despise the Republican Party, which just runs a campaign of cruelty. That's it. And it's backfiring on them because human beings are not as fucking disgusting as these scumbags are. Okay? As migrants arrived, Martha's Vineyard residents and businesses lined up to help. Food, coffee, bedding, and warm clothes have been arriving as the island works to meet the needs of more than 40 people that were flown there without warning. Turns out human beings are significantly more decent. So yeah, get, get, get fucked, okay? Get absolutely fucked. Thank you, Dallas5360, for the five. Get the subs. They keep, they keep fucking claiming that there's a caravan. There's a caravan. Anyway, here's a Martha's Vineyard uh, person. With some words. I was at St. Andrew's Church helping to feed these people. They were told they were going to Boston where housing and jobs were waiting for them. In other words, they were lied to. There were men, women, and children. They hadn't eaten anything since 6 a.m. What kind of depraved individual loads up 50 people onto a plane and dumps them in a strange place without even notifying anyone that they're coming? These are leaders. These are Christians. I'll tell you what. This is it's a disgusting political stunt at the expense of human beings just wanting to work and provide for their families. But you know what? 
on this island. We treated them with dignity. We fed them. We gave them medical attention, and we will give them a warm and safe place to sleep. Tomorrow, we will give them breakfast and help them figure out what's next. Because on Martha's Vineyard, we won't turn our backs on people in need who are being abused by extremist Republican governors for some cheap soundbite on Fox News. Thank you to all the volunteers who were there. It restores my faith in humanity that we came together to help the people in need. So the irony here, of course, is that Greg Abbott was doing this already. He was busing them to D.C. And then DeSantis, of course, immediately jumped on it and wanted to do the same shit. Greg Abbott is doing uh, the, the, the buses from the buses that you saw on Fox News most likely were not even Ron DeSantis's. They were uh, Greg Abbott's uh, buses. The ones that are in D.C. Ron DeSantis did the Martha's Vineyard one, and Greg Abbott did the D.C. one. He's been doing it for a while. So here is what they here is what the Ron DeSantis claim is now. If you have, he's trying to flip this as people are fucking yelling. Florida, <laughs> Florida truckers. Yes, if you have folks that are inclined to think florida is a good place our message to them is we are what does dick taste like my guy dude why don't you ask your mom she can literally tell you what my dick tastes like that's such a weird question to direct at me i mean come on dude you're really gonna you're really gonna let me you're really gonna give me an alley-oop that's so silly you just you just came in here and you were like yeah uh my mom is freshly fucked and i want everyone to know in the chat i'm gonna signal to everyone are not a sanctuary state and it's better to be able to go to a sanctuary jurisdiction and yes we will help facilitate that transport for you to be able to go to greener pastures yes if you have too easy if you want to be snarky do it in a funny way at least yeah democratic states are greener pastures yeah literally he's saying florida is not a green pasture which is true it's not it's uh, it is a human rights abuse to just make anyone live in Florida, let alone, uh, you know, migrants that are coming in. Um, okay. Like anyone. And now they're saying the word is spreading about this in Mexico. I talked to a sheriff on the border who told me the cartels are using this as a way to encourage migrants to cross the border. Numbers are surging at the border. And while I don't think anyone would argue it's Texas's responsibility alone to house or provide care for every migrant, the state only started sending buses to Democrat-led cities earlier this year. So I, I wonder, what did Texas do previously? You know, Texas for years has fo focused on the enforcement on the law enforcement on the border. And the way that Texas DPS has always put it, and the governors, all, uh, governors, including Abbott, has put it in the past, is they focus on filling in the gaps of security where Border Patrol can't because of surges at different points in time that we've all covered. Now, what has changed now, Anna, and this is the interesting and fascinating part of this, what has changed is the cost. Who's paying for this, the transportation? Because back to the story that I was sharing with you just moments ago, where migrants are taken by Border Patrol to respite centers, and from there they go to places across the country. In the past, before April, before Governor Abbott started offering these free buses to migrants, what would happen is these migrants would pay for the bus tickets themselves. Their family members across the country would send them money to the border and pay for these bus tickets or plane tickets so it was coming from the pockets of the migrants or from their family members. What's different now is that the taxpayer up, is now paying for it. It's being doing? politicized. That's what's different. That's what we're seeing here across the border. And if I may add, if I can just have a, a little more time here, Anna, because the word is spreading about this in Mexico. I talked to a sheriff hmm. on the border who told me that the cartels are using this as a way to encourage migrants to cross the border. I just talked to an organization, a nonprofit, a respite center. The irony here is that like busing migrants away from uh, busing migrants away from uh, Mexico and all these other fucking southern states and sending them to like places like Massachusetts is unironically going to hurt the bottom line of agricultural producers and also like chicken factories and shit. Because the reality is. Those places unironically do create this like, uh, you know, uh, they, they rely on uh, migrant labor. They literally do. So you're, you're fucking up your own bag, my man. You are. You are. Oh, a sheriff. OK, they never lie. I mean, the the idiot, the the idiocy of this sheriffs, you know, the folks who talk to cartels every day, like what? 
Like, the, the idiocy of this is tenfold, okay? But it's just like the absolute fucking worst possible outcome for so many people. And it, unironically, I think is good for uh, the, the miners themselves. If they're getting a fucking free ticket to a blue state, a sanctuary city, yeah, great. I hope, I hope that uh, the, the libtards at these fucking places don't actually flub this and fuck it up and use it as an opportunity to show the rest of the world uh, and do a little bit of agitprop as well to show that these are just human beings that are looking for a better life and they can very easily, uh, they can very easily work alongside, uh, you know, uh, American citizens, naturalized U.S. citizens or natural born U.S. citizens, which of course, as you can see from uh, the, the uh, CNN coverage here, uh, they're taking a relatively right-wing approach to this, where they're like, oh, this is actually making more migrants come into the country. It's like, well, that's not necessarily a bad thing. If only Republicans considered all humans as people, uh, I, I will see. The, the, or, the, the director of that respite center said that migrants are arriving to the U.S. asking about Abbott's buses. Now, a few weeks ago, I interviewed DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, and I asked him about this. I said, I, I said, Secretary, what I'm hearing from people on the ground, from a sheriff, is that the cartels are using this information to encourage migrants to cross the border. Is that the intelligence that you're hearing? And what Secretary Mayorga said up, is that that's not the intelligence that he has, to be clear. But he said it wouldn't surprise him, Anna, if that were the case, because that's what human smuggling organizations do. Mm. That's what criminal organizations do. They lie and they take advantage of migrants. And in this right. case, migrants who are wanting to come to the border for a better life. Yeah, I wish I, wish I could see more of this fucking sheriff. I, I would love to hear from this fucking sheriff. Um, but yeah, as DeSantis and Abbott sent immigrants to cities, towns of political opposition worth recalling when a similar thing was proposed and ICE officials deemed it illegal under Trump. The plan was, of course, favored by Stephen Miller, everyone's favorite white supremacist, Trump's main policy advisor. And then it was shut down by ICE's lawyers, people said at the time and more recently. The idea had already been deemed illegal by ICE when Trump said it of sanctuary cities. We can give them an unlimited supply of undocumented immigrants. Gotta love how there's always a surge or a caravan like four to six weeks before an election. Sienna loves this shit and pushes it every time. Remember their a caravan graphics from 2018? The news ended one day after the election. Yeah, but this time there was no fucking caravan at all, so they just made the own caravan. I mean, last time they made their own caravan as well, but at least there was like actually a surge in migrants that were escaping her, uh, horrifying conditions back home uh, trying to come into the United States. But this time they're like, yeah, we couldn't fucking whip one up in time. So we're just making our own. That's great. That's great. Love that.